This is part 7 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to update HTML elements on a form with new data. First, let's understand why do we need to update HTML elements on a form with new data. Let's say we're using this form to edit an existing employee details. For us to be able to edit an existing employee details, we must first retrieve that existing employee details from a server and then populate these controls on the form with that retrieved data. This can be very easily achieved using setValue method. Now, if we take a look at this abstract control class provided by Angular, it has this method setValue. Now we know both form group and form control classes inherit from this base class abstract control class. This means on both the form group instance and form control instance, we can use setValue method. So here is what we want to do. When we click this load data button, we want to retrieve the existing data and then populate these form controls with that existing data. So first, let's include the required HTML for this load data button. In our create employee component view template, let's include another button in our panel footer. Let's make a copy of the save button and then change the bits that are required. This is not a submit button, so the type is going to be button and the text on the button is load data. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice both the buttons are attached to each other. To give some space between these buttons, let's place them inside a bootstrap button toolbar. To create a button toolbar, all we need to do is wrap both of these buttons in another development. And then on this wrapping div, use the bootstrap btn toolbar CSS class. Notice now we have some space between the buttons. When the slow data button is clicked, we want to call a method within our component class. So let's bind to its click event. Let's call the method on load data click. We don't have this method in our component class, so let's create it. Let's place it after this ng on init lifecycle hook. This method is not going to return anything, so the return type is void. So what do we want to do when we click this load data button? We want to set value for all these form controls. And we know all these form controls are present in a form group called employee form form group. So on this form group instance, we're going to invoke set value method. And then pass value for each form control within this form group. First, let's specify a value for this full name form control. Let's set its value to Presume Technologies, next email, and then the nested form group skills. To indicate that we have a nested form group here, we include another pair of curly braces and then specify values for these three form controls within this skills nested form group. So let's specify values for skill name, experience in years, and proficiency. Notice I have set the value for proficiency as beginner. So that means when we click this load data button, this beginner radio button should be selected. So let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now when we click this load data button, all the form controls are populated with data as expected. At the moment, employee data is hard coded within this method but we can very easily call a server-side service, retrieve an existing employee details, and then populate these form controls. So, to update all controls on a form, we use setValue method. But what if we want to update only a subset of form controls? Now, let's say we only want to update full name and email, but not the skill-related fields, that is skill name, experience in years, and proficiency. Can we still use set value method for that? The answer is no, we can't. We use patch value method for that. So we use patch value to update a subset of form controls. Now let's try to use set value instead and see what happens. Notice we are still using the set value method. Now let's comment these three skill related fields. Let's launch browser developer tools and then click this load data button. 
Notice we have an error. Must supply a value for form control with name skills. So we cannot use set value method to update a subset of form controls. We use patch value instead. So instead of using set value here, let's use patch value. Notice now when we click this load data button, full name and email form controls are populated without any errors. Now, can we use patch value method to update all form controls? The answer is yes. Let's actually verify that. Let's uncomment the skill related fields and notice we are still using patch value. So let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now when we click load data button, all the form controls are updated. So, can we use patch value to update all the form controls? Yes, we can use patch value to either update all the form controls or only a subset of form controls. In either cases, patch value method succeeds without any error. Set value on the other hand can only be used to update all the form controls. You cannot use it to update a subset of form controls. If you try to, you'll get an error. So set value is very useful when we want to update all the form controls. If we accidentally miss a value for a form control, set value fails with an error. So we know we are missing something. Patch value on the other hand silently fails without any error. So you may not realize you have missed something, especially when you have a very large form group. So in short, use set value to update all form controls and patch value to update a subset of form controls. Thank you for watching and have a great day.